for a number of years, I have been involved in a, kind of an alternative philosophy movement. Uh, it's a humanitarian movement. Uh, a lot of people call it voluntarism. Uh, it's, it's a moral philosophy. And part of that, uh, or, or you know, not really part of it, but associated with that is an economic uh, system or, or a school of economic thought called the Austrian school. And it's a free market capitalist type of system. And between the moral philosophy and the economics part, fortunately, uh, both of the little fringe groups that I'm in are pretty good at predicting things that will happen in the future. And every so often, I'll be thinking, yep, I think that's going to happen. And then something happens. And then I think, well, yeah, now it's easy to say, I told you so. So I thought instead, why don't I make a video with a few things that I think will probably happen uh, in the next five or 10 years? It's, it's yeah. You know, why don't we just say by 2030, 2040, something like that. It's currently 2023, uh, spring of 2023. And uh, yeah, I'm going to toss out a, a few things that I think eh, might, might not, but uh, I, I have a, a pretty good feeling that some of these things will happen. So the first one is the, and it, and it kind of, is a big deal because many of the other things will be based on that. Um, the United Nations sustainability movement, uh, religion, whatever you want to call it, that will continue and it will continue to grow uh, stronger and stronger. Now, by the way, and I should have said this before I brought up the UN, everything that I'm going to say, this is based on, I don't know, if 25% of people started realizing that things that they saw in a movie were propaganda or we're able to just identify when they're being manipulated. And if 25% of people became interested in moral philosophy, even if it wasn't mine, if they really with an open mind investigated these things, then none of the things I say will happen. So uh, if humanitarians are successful in defeating tyranny, then this won't happen. But if it, if the people are not successful in helping humanity win, then uh, the, then these things will probably happen. So when I mention UN sustainability, uh, look at, uh, go online and search for UN sustainability goals. And you'll see that I think there are 17 now. Uh, there was a tw uh, Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, Agenda 2050, but they're all kind of part of a central plan for how to control human humans, humanity, um, how to design the lives of everyone so that everybody will be happy. And, it, and it's kind of based on the premise that, hey, there are a number of us who have very nice degrees, or we have earned a lot of money, and or we have a lot of power in our government, um, a bunch of governments who buy into this. And we, as, as those people, we are way smarter than the average person. The average person who's just a, a doctor or a taxi driver or an accountant or a, a computer programmer or something like that, those people are all idiots and can't really decide how best to live their lives. And they're going to have too many children. They're just, they're going to mess everything up. So we, the smart ones, are going to come up with a plan to make the world better for everybody for a long time or, or not for everybody, to make the world better in the long run because people are messing it up. So that is kind of the, the foundation of the UN's sustainability movement. And I'm not going to say whether it's right or wrong. Many of their things like traffic circles, love traffic circles. They make good sense. Not opposed to that. Um, however, there are also many things that they say that are, you know, we don't want anybody to be hungry. Well, what they mean by that is we're going to go over to the person who's working hard and, and producing food, and we're going to steal that from them to give it to the person who's hungry, and we're going to take a bunch of it for ourselves. So, so there's some real problems with it, but I'm also not going to make a uh, tell you it's absolutely a horrible thing. Some of the parts of it are good, some are not. It is well worth investigating the sustainability movement, and don't go to conspiracy theory sites. Uh, go to where... The United, go to the United Nations site. They put everything there. It's really, you just have to really think about it as you read it, but they make it very clear what they intend to do. And much of it sounds really good. Um, you know, we're going to liberate the person of the means of harming others. Well, that would essentially be taking a can of pepper spray away from a woman who's about to be raped. Not taking away, it's liberated is all. Um, there's a lot of silly word twisting or actually very intelligent word twisting. But if you think about it, 
with a sophisticated mind, understanding propaganda, understanding that kind of thing, um, go straight to the source, ignore the conspiracy theorists, look at the UN's webpage, read their goals, and uh, that'll help you know what's coming in the future. Um, another thing that's going to happen is central banks, uh, which are private banks uh, that are called central banks, they often will have some name that makes them sound like they're part of the government. Like in the United States, it's called the, the Federal Reserve. Well, it's about as federal as Federal Express. It's, uh, yeah, it's regulated by the government. They have input. They tell them what to do back and forth and such, but it's a private bank. And central banks are usually private banks. So they will want a digital currency version of their current monies. So in the United States, that would be the US dollar um, that will be changing over to be a central bank digital currency, CBDC. And the reason for this is so that people will be able to track, the government will be able to track what people are spending their money on, um, how they're getting their money, how they're sending it out, et cetera. So if somebody makes a $5 purchase from a neighbor, they will see that this human being gave that human being $5. And there will be many fancy things used to describe how helpful it will be. They'll have all these, uh, you know, well, this will be a great way that if you're ever wondering, hey, did I ever pay Bill for breaking his shovel handle? Well, now all you have to do is look back in your app and you'll be able to see it. We want you to be in control of your app. Well, of course, they're going to have complete visibility. They'll be able to see everything that's taking place. They'll be able to say, oh, Shepard is spending a lot of time with Bill. Money is going back and forth. Evidently, they're close associates. Is that a problem? Am I just being fearful uh, about what could happen? No, I, I think I think it's going to happen, and I think I should be scared. Uh, I don't buy meth. I don't to hire people to kill other people. Like I don't do anything bad, morally wrong. Um, but things can change, uh, and I don't mean I'm going to change and start doing morally wrong things but like going and protesting in a building what would be called that 10 years ago might 10 years later be called an insurrection or speaking out against you know using your free speech uh, using your speech to say things that you believe could be considered uh, incitement or terrorism or uh, what's the other big sedition that kind of thing like governments will change their rules and make peaceful moral things become have the appearance of being nasty. So yeah, it, it kind of worries me that they could say, huh, Shepard has been saying that, uh, I don't know, Mexicans are as important as uh, Norwegians. And at this point in history, uh, we think Norwegians are more important and the they are a protected group, Mexicans are not. Therefore, Shepard is a racist and we're going to freeze all of his bank accounts. Um, th that is going to happen. Like the kind of stuff is already happening, even without a fully implemented central bank digital currency. So that's going to, that's going to come about. Um, governments will use the uh, the excuse of safety and security. We're doing it for the, you know, for the children. We're doing it for your safety. You know, there, there are just too many bad people out there and they go out and they do really bad things. And then the law enforcement, their, their hands are tied. They can't trace down these horrible people who kill and murder and, and scare people and say the wrong things. And we can't find these people if we aren't able to track their economic activity. Um, so therefore we have to do that. So that's what governments will say. Um, let's see here. And I'm, I'm reading, which is why I'm looking down. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, there'll probably be some big event to, to make this happen. Some highly publicized event. So just like the number of mass shootings haven't really increased or de decreased that much. If the media is instructed or encouraged or whatever, to really make a big deal out of it every single time it happens, then all of a sudden you're going to think, wow, the last six months, there have been a lot of mass shootings or a lot of blue vans have been involved in traffic collisions. We've got to get rid of blue vans, you know, whatever it is. Um, it'll be made very public. There'll be a lot of hype around some big event. So with COVID, it was, oh, everybody's going to die. And so then all the news outlets and everything, everybody wanted to do a bunch of stuff about it. And then it just kind of grew upon itself. And I don't think there was some big conspiracy where Fauci was on the phone telling the little local pharmacy, hey, make everybody wear masks. I don't think it was 
like that much of an organized conspiracy kind of thing. It's just kind of how how things tumble once it starts at the top. Once a, a good propagandist gets a movement going at the top, that's how it that's how it unfolds. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so I don't know what that'll be. Maybe a cyber attack, um, but by terrorists, of course. Uh, maybe it'll be domestic terrorists because then you could kill two birds with one stone. And if at that time, I don't know, people who do abstract art are considered terrorists, domestic terrorists, then maybe some artwork could be sold um, and then the person doesn't pay them and you can't track it because it was with Bitcoin or Monero instead of a good, solid, trustworthy central bank digital currency. Um, and therefore, because this poor person was a victim and and yet again, these abstract artists, if they are the the evil group at the time um, that would be used as, you know, we've got to stop these abstract artists or, or whatever the enemy is that the, the governments choose to, to make people frightened of. Um, next, I think that some politicians will be caught lying. And I think that the politicians who are pretending to be on the other side in the United States, it's basically, there's a right and a left. And on the right side, they're called Republicans or libertarians with a capital L, and then on the left, they're called Democrats. Well, if it is a Democrat caught lying, then the Republicans and libertarians will say, see, that's a that's what the Democrats do. They lie. You can't trust Democrats, blah, blah, blah. And they'll, they'll do that. And when it's the turn of the Republicans to tell a lie, then the Democrats will say, you know, see, that's why, that's how the other side does. They, they, that's what they do. They lie. And then, of course, at that point, the Libertarians will say, see, that's why we're a step better than the Republicans. We don't lie. So, yeah, politicians will lie as they have since they've existed. Uh, and I'm not saying occasionally. I'm saying it's the manner of business. Like it's not a occasionally there's a bad one who will occasionally tell a lie to protect themselves or protect their marriage because they messed up. It, like they lie. That's what they do. They, they they tell half truths or omissions and basically they're just dishonest. And so that will continue and it will be made out to be big news by the, the opposite side. Um, politicians will be caught cheating on their spouses. You can look forward to the next 10, 20 years. You'll see reports that such and such a politician cheated on their spouse, you know, maybe with somebody in the office or whatever. But yeah, we'll hear more of those reports. Um, and part of the reason I'm, I'm saying all this is this is why I don't watch news because news is just a regurgitation of everything that I'm talking about. And probably I'm sure I've missed some things. That's all news is, is, oh my gosh, politician Bill told a lie. And everyone else is enraged because, of course, Republican politicians would never tell a lie like Bill Clinton did. So holy cow, let's all get excited and be scared of Bill Clinton and all of his Democrats. Um, and then it goes back and forth. The two sides who think that they're on different sides. Um, yeah. OK, so politicians will lie. They'll cheat on their spouses. Oh, uh, poor nations will be encouraged to take out loans to develop their infrastructure and provide all kinds of things that people need, food, access to health care, et cetera. The poor countries, uh, not the people in the country, but the, the governments who rule the people, they will be encouraged to take out loans from private central banks to fund uh, building infrastructure. And then part of the loan terms will be a bunch of strings that will make sure that the people do what is appropriate according to world leaders. So let's say that sustainability is, is important at the time. Uh, then, you know, part of this loan is that they have to enact sustainable practices. Like, you know, half the population has to get to work on bicycles by such and such a year. And then the the poor country is thinking, well, that doesn't make sense. Um, but yeah, we'll make our people do that. We kind of have to at this point, or they'll def we'll default on the loan, and then they'll come and they'll own all of our country. <laughs> so they'll be pressured like that. And if you'd like to learn more, there's a, a very left-wing uh, Democrat who wrote a book. Um, and I discovered this last few years, I've tried to read more books, Democrat, Republican, and not just the independent ones that I've been reading. So this one was by a Democrat, um, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Um, and it's a very telling book. And that'll kind of explain what that process is. Um, and yeah, so that's going to continue. 
uh, develop nations. They'll be fighting wars, uh, probably, you know, sometimes with each other, but usually uh, it'll be a developed nation that will fight against uh, a, a nation. And when I say nation, I mean a government. Um, I'm not talking about the people who live there, but against the government. Um, in the that government of the, the uh, country, the nation where uh, the the wealthy nations are fighting against, there'll be a lot of people with a darker skin color, brown, black, some combination thereof, um, and they'll be considered terrorists or infidels or bad guys, or they'll come up with some name that stirs up a lot of emotion. Um, and so then in order to wage this war, of course, to keep children uh, safe, because it, it is for the children and to, to, for the national security and our way of life and, and our safety, we have to do this, even though we don't want to. That'll be the, the line, as it always has been. Oh, and part of the other war propaganda will be, look at these heinous things that the other people have done, and that's why they deserve to be treated like the dogs that they are, these blah, 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 all kinds of derogatory terms against the people. Um, so, so those wars will happen. The wealthy nations will fund them. And when I say wealthy, they're not really like bottom line wealthy, but we live like we are in the US. Um, most people are living really well and it's not a, a sustainable thing, but we are. Um, we, you know, we, we get to have a bunch of cars and nice houses and nice food and consistent food and warmth or cool to be comfortable and all this kind of stuff. Um, so that those countries will be borrowing money from private central banks in order to fund the wars. Typically, those central banks aren't going to only loan money to, let's say the United States wants to go after Iran. The central bank will loan money to the United States to buy jet fighters and uh, bombs and bullets and health care and you know money goes to Halliburton to have the cafeterias on the on the, the battlefront and etc. But that same central bank will be loaning money to Iran for bullets and bombs and jet fighters and cafeterias and so on and so forth. So the central banks are not. I don't think they're discriminatory against just one side. They're more than happy to encourage the war and loan both sides money to to fight that war because it, it must be done for the good of the people and to save the children. Um, let's see here. Oh, and by the way, these, these central bank loans for wars and other things, they're not meant to ever be paid off. They're meant to be leveraged. Uh, then when the government is no longer able to pay, whether it's Iran or some some poor undeveloped country who's told, hey, you need to have better sewer systems, let us loan you $6 billion so we can we can build these. Uh, and then that $6 billion is never, like that's way more than the, the national budget can pay. Like they can't just tax people enough to pay that and they know it. So they'll refinance and they'll do all kinds of finagling and well, you know, we blah, 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 just like they do in the United States and all, all countries where uh, central bank loans are are done. So in other words, developed nations, I think just about everywhere. Um, let's see here. This is a good time to pay the bills. Please watch this advertisement. Politicians around the world, when they are asked uh, direct questions, usually a, a good, a good smart politician, if they're having a press conference, they'll make it clear beforehand that there are certain things you can and can't ask. There'll be a approved list of questions, and maybe they'll, you'll be the lucky reporter who gets to ask question sixteen. Uh, but you're of course not allowed to ask really true, truly difficult, challenging questions. But when those questions come through, somehow get to the politician, the politician will pretend to answer them and will really skirt the issue and turn it into a talk about one of their other talking points that's very vague and untraceable and blah, 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 because that's what politicians always have done and always will do. So you can look forward to, to seeing that in the upcoming years. Um, sports ball teams and other, other sports, <clears throat> some of them will play against the other ones and beat them. And then the ones who are beaten will plan to do better, but they're really proud of themselves for doing as well as they did. 
and then the team who won will pretend to be a little bit humble, but will really be proud. And then they'll play again a bunch and people will be very happy and excited. Um, so yes, that's takes up a bunch of the news. So you can kind of expect that, that to happen. Some people, some teams will beat other teams. Um, Let's see here. Oh, and by the way, teams are not going to become inclusive or do the equality that everybody talks about. Um, like a you know a, a 430 pound five foot two black lady uh, is not going to be playing in the NBA in an important role. Um, so as much as we want to be inclusive and ignore gender and ignore ability and all of this stuff, for something as important as people hold sports to be, that's going to remain the best person for the job, kind of more of a, a Martin Luther uh, King Jr. kind of thing of of judge by the content of their character, by their by their capabilities, rather than the color of their skin or their gender or whatever. So that will that will continue. Um, something else that's going to happen is famous actors and, and movers and shakers in the industry and sports ball players and politicians, um, they will be canceled. Uh, various ones will be canceled at various times for saying something that was, yeah, maybe right, maybe wrong. Uh, so, you know, if a person goes 30 professional years saying things that are pretty vanilla and acceptable, and then they have a lapse in judgment for four seconds and say something that is inappropriate. And then afterward they say, Oh gosh, that was messed up. I shouldn't have said that. Sorry. Well, that inappropriate thing, they'll be canceled for that. So that will continue to happen. I, I predict, um, Oh, small farms and uh, other businesses, you know, electricians and restaurants and retailers, et cetera, they will continue to disappear and large corporations, large corporate farming and, and retail and entertainment, dining, uh, lodging, it'll be more and more the huge companies that uh, own everything. And we've already seen this trend, but that will continue. And, and by the way, one of the ways that this, this works is, let's say that two entities want to start up a, uh, a restaurant in a rapidly growing town, and they both go, wow, this would be a good place to be. And so the the big corporation goes in, well, they already have their policy manuals and all of their systems in place for doing this. They've tried and failed for years. They now know the system as it's running in hundreds or thousands of their other stores. And so it's easy for them to come in and make things happen. And they have plenty of money. Uh, whereas the small, uh, the ma and pa type place, uh, they're told they have to have an environmental impact uh, study done, which is $25,000. And then they have to have a sustainability impact, um, proactive study done, which is another $25,000. Well, the, the wealthy, big established company, they already have done those. So they just go into the, the word processing document and they change the the name of the city and the square footage to the new one. And uh, may they make a few changes like that, but they have the boilerplate template. They're ready to go. It costs them nothing. Whereas the Ma and Pa, who hardly had any money to get the business going, uh, now they're faced right off the bat with the $50,000 of uh, regulatory stuff from their masters, and they're not going to be able to do that. Uh, if they are able to spend the money to do that, that's going to take so much out of their operating budget that then they can't have the nice tables and fryers and all the other things that a restaurant in this example would need. Um, so they're not going to be able to hang on. Good chance they'll go out of business fairly quickly. So we're going to continue to see that trend. There are other factors, obviously, that that go into into this. But that's that's one of the cool tricks that, and of course, the big companies are like, yeah, let's keep the uh, environmental impact studies going. Let's definitely require that. Let's make it more complex and and let's wine and dine the planners to make it worse and worse and worse in the areas in which they are tyrants. So that that, that stuff will continue. Uh, and then lastly that I've mentioned here, uh, let's see, governments will encourage people directly and through propaganda that the government's logo and branding is good. And so an example in the United States is uh, the US government's flag, the red, white, and blue. Um, they'll continue to have that placed in a bunch of movies and sitcoms. And it'll usually be done at a time when there's a lot of high emotion and people are feeling elated and you'll see a flag flying in the background. Um, so, and that's, you know, product placement. Um, that will continue. It'll be through things like getting kids to go to ROTC or Boy Scouts or getting adults to go to the Rotary Club and having them 
whatever the pledge is, they'll do that to the to the government's symbol, and that that whole thing will continue. They'll do it through patriotism, uh, especially for governments who are really involved in the military industrial complex. They'll continue to make make people feel really good about thanking uh, thanking somebody who fought in the military industrial complex and and oh I'm so glad you fought for the flag for the symbol um, so that will continue in all countries um, and you know of course the other guys are the bad guys and we're the good guys uh, let's see here yeah so those are just a few things and I'll bet you that in a roundabout way those 13 things that I just mentioned um, that makes up 80 percent of the news on any given day and will for the next many years. That's what you'll expect to see. Oh, and something I didn't mention. I'm going to add a 14th. I guess I kind of did through the sustainability thing. A big part of that will be veganism, uh, plant-based diets. Uh, so yeah, that definitely falls into that category. But you'll see a lot of plant-based food stuff. You'll see way more bike paths. You'll see way more government transportation. You'll see government trying to edge out taxi cabs through microtransit uh options, getting rid of people owning their own vehicles through subways and buses, even when it doesn't work, as in certain failure examples in Texas, um, you'll see a lot more of that kind of stuff. But that's all part of the, the looking into Agenda uh, 21, Agenda 30, Agenda 2050, um, and kind of just looking deeply into to what's happening there. So I, I hope this was helpful. And I hope that someday I can uh, uh, look back at this and say, man, I was wrong on every single one of these uh, people in 2023 and 2024 and 2025 all came together and decided that peace and nonviolence and, and 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 just goodness was the way to go. And and they persuaded nobody, persuaded everyone, hey, don't run for government, don't vote, don't pay taxes, don't demand taxes. And and hopefully the, the IRS and the politicians who tell the IRS to steal the money, hopefully everyone will just say, hey, we were wrong, we apologize. Let's do the right thing. Let's be productive. Let's go create value in the world. I hope that that happens. And I hope that I'm wrong about all of these things. Please do subscribe. It means a ton to me. If you don't enjoy my content, then I wouldn't subscribe. It'll just be annoying. But if you do, I'd love it. Thank you.